Well, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Quest Interstellar Explorer, or the, yeah, Quest Interstellar Worlds Observer, uh, which is my first uh, interstellar mission in this mod pack. Well, unless you count the previous one, which I'd named Ion Test. <laughs> uh, completely forgetting to give it a name. Uh, because of that, I was very tempted to name this just Ion Quest or Ion Test 2, and just kind of stick with the theme of having no names. Uh, but nah, I called it the uh, Quest Interstellar Worlds Observer. Uh, so, I'll, I'll get to its features in a second, but our target, uh, I need to clean up this map mode screen. Uh, again, no, that's that's the star we're at. Our, our target is either Sun Orc, uh, which is Cro Cronus, or Gleam. Cronus or Gleam, I don't know which one I'm going to yet. Uh, but either one is a valid target, and we may get to do both. Uh, and I was able to add uh, some interesting features, uh, which I will get to show off as soon as the fairing uh, gets knocked off here in a few minutes. Uh, but Valentina is our pilot today. Uh, okay, hold on. My web Why is my webcam still... Oh, right. Okay, hold on. Webcam should go about here-ish. Let's get the game back open. Because uh, I was doing some stationaries, and that was in the way of some stuff. I didn't record the whole playthrough, unfortunately. I just recorded some tours and stuff, so hopefully that'll get uploaded at some point. Uh, Alright, so let's uh, get this thing all the way uh, to orbit. Let's just get out of the atmosphere here. Then, let's just circularize. Oh. I'm very dumb. Uh, okay, so this is probably going to be a very short-lived mission. Uh, we can still test it out, but I just realized a very stupid mistake I made. And I'll show it to you when I open the fairing uh, and do the feature tour. Uh, we're going to get to orbit any second now. Or who knows, maybe we can take it out to... Uh, uh, well, what's the one we have? Okay, this... Maybe we can take it out to a uh, stone and test it there. Okay, so I just realized a critical design flaw. Uh, boom! I present to you the uh, the Quest Interstellar Explorer Mark One because there's going to be a Mark Two, uh, and you'll notice there's a liquid fuel stage up here. I was able to incorporate a small lander without the burn times and Delta V uh, suffering too much on my my, my camera. Yeah, I was able to incorporate a small lander which is capable of landing on anything up to Moho sized, I believe, uh, and can redock although it can't refuel because there's no fuel. Uh, it runs on the uh, the high snap ion thruster, which consumes 100, which consumes 200 electric charge per second, uh, and runs, uh, I think it has a total burn time of about 14 hours or something like that, but 100 times time warp. Uh, hold on, what is that 100 times time warp? That's about 8.4 minutes of uh, total burn time, which is reasonable, uh, assuming that this thing is actually stable at that high warp. It's powered uh, by three um, Kerbo Power Fission Reactors. Uh, that only supplies 180 power per second, though, so I will be running this uh, with thrust limiter set to 90%, which will increase the burn time a little bit. Uh, and I do have emergency backup solar panels in case we run out of fuel in these, because the fuel in these is only supposed to last five years. Uh, now, the, 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 the flaw uh, is that these require radiators, and I forgot them. So, uh, but, but we're going to uh, do a, a bit of a test drive here. Oh, that's a really cool sound. Okay, that's a really cool plume. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's turn these on. I have an action group bound. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong action group. This action group uh, should turn them on. Available power, core temperature uh, is exceeding available amounts. But we are uh, consuming electric charge at about the rate we expected. So if we set this to 90, we are gaining electric charge. The core overheater is shutting down. Okay, and that's about what we, what we get. Okay, all right, so we need... We need a cooling. We need a cooling supply. Uh, but other than that, this seems to perform great. Uh, let me. Uh, I'm gonna real quickly uh, restore my batteries, and then attempt to. Uh, the game crashed. <laughs> the game crashed. <laughs> it doesn't like my ship. Uh, okay, I'll come back to you eventually. I might not play again tonight, but I will come back to you eventually. Okay, I am back. I don't know what episode this is, uh, but the game crash completely reverted the entire launch for some reason. Uh, so we redid that. We have radiators, 
And now it's time to make sure this thing actually works before I send it out on uh, the stupid interplanetary journey. So I'm going to make a quick save here. And the first thing I'm going to do... This is the ion engine, I believe. Okay. Activate radiator. Uh, this should never be off. Activate radiator. Activate radiator. So the idea is now that we go prograde. Uh, turn the reactors on with action group 3, I believe it is. And 150 kilowatts. Let's go. And they should be perfectly fine with the radiators we have now. Uh, let's cut this down to 90% thrust limiter, like we said we were going to do. And see uh, how much time warp we can withstand. Okay, well, another quick save here. 25. We are stable on 25 time warp with slight oscillation. Do we have a reaction wheel in here? Uh, command. Uh, control. Reaction wheel is authority. Let's turn that down to like 10%. Because we are getting some oscillations. Okay, so uh, let's go up to 50 times time warp. We are stable on 50 times time warp. Let's go. Okay. Now the big one. Can we go twice as fast as we are currently going? No, we cannot. The game crashed again. I don't know what's going on with that. But it does look like we are limited to 50 times time warp uh, for this particular vessel. Interesting. Uh, I will uh, set a time warp lower than 100x, uh, and I will reload the game, and I'll let you know when I'm there. Okay, I have returned. I've reloaded the game. And I am going to do some stability tests for the new 60 times time warp. 10x. Stable. Uh, let's reduce our reaction wheel authority a little bit. Uh, actually, hold on. Let's use orbit prograde, because Mechchev is usually a little bit better at keeping things stable. 30 times. I am uh, a little bit concerned about how much that is shifting, but let's try 60. Nope. <laughs> Game crash again. Okay, it really does not like going above 50. All right, I will stay at 50 instead of 60, though. So now, in theory, 50 times time warp is our maximum. Uh, well, okay. Uh, this is Ion Rescuer, and it looks like it's going to be... What on earth? Oh, okay, no, that orbits around this thing. Okay, I thought for a second this was an orbit. I'm like, what? That orbit doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, I should go to the tracking station and delete some of these. But Gleam and Cronus appear to be in half-decent transfer positions. All right, let's see what we can do uh, by burning this way. All right, well, it looks like we are going to Gleam, and the journey is going to take 65 years. I'm sorry, Valentina, <laughs> you're going to be inside for a, a little bit. Uh, but, uh, no, for, for Kerbal's live forever. This is like two seconds for them. Uh, I did completely forget, uh, that this takes 17 hours to burn. Uh, you know, actually, with new 50 times time warp, how long will I be burning for? That is a good question. I would like to know, just for sanity's sake. Uh, two days and four hours of burn time. So the Kerbal laser six hours, this will be 12, 16 hours. Which is that many seconds divided by 50 divided by uh, 60. That's going to be about 20 total minutes of burn time. That's not that bad. Okay. All right. Uh, in that case, I will uh, come back to you uh, eventually. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen. No! I didn't quit. Okay. So I thought another thermal system could be weird uh, at high time warp. Look, look, look. I I'm saying, that was obviously a glitch. We've got sufficient radiators for the reactors, as we've demonstrated. Uh, so just to be sure that never happens again, uh, I'm going to turn on a ignore max temperature and just leave it like that way. Okay, so change of plans. We are not going to Gleam. We are going to Cronus, because uh, it uh, it just showed up, and I was able to transfer there uh, randomly. 
Uh, so, let's go to Cronus instead. We. Oh, shoot. I need to turn the reactors off. Uh, that should be action group three. Uh, right. Action group three. Okay, because these things do have a limited lifetime. Like, uh, I can only run these for a total of five years. So if I accidentally time work for five years, it's a dead. And I can't come back. Okay, so, uh, we still can't see much, uh, and we've got the black hole over there. Uh, I think that might be Cronus, that little dot in the distance. Uh, I'm unsure. Oh, shoot, I need to uh, disable the reactors. Keep forgetting to do that. The reactors are off. Okay, so Cronus is coming up. I think it's that dot. So I don't see any other dots it could be, unless that's that dot. No, that's Clara. That might be Cronus. So yeah, we're, we're, go we're aiming for a planet called Oculus. Uh, the only reason I chose it is because the ascending and D nodes were the closest. The ascending and descending nodes were the closest to lining up. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that is Cronus right there. I know nothing about these places. Uh, so my initial reactions... I, I just know that it has like a couple of planets. That's all I know. And I think one of them is rings because the icon had rings. <laughs> uh, yep, that's definitely Cronus because I see it getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is the closest we'll get to the black hole for a while. And wow, it is definitely a bit more striking from here. Interesting. Can't wait to get closer. Yep. Cronus, orange-ish star, I think. Uh, is that a planet? No, that's a smudge of dust on my monitor. There are the planets. Okay. Okay, so we're in the system now, and we can kind of get some illumination back. Uh, we're not getting much power at this, uh, as, as expected. But we want to burn retrograde near periapsis. So, uh, the plants. I know one of them's called Oculus, one of them's called Hades, one of them is called Aries. Is one of them called Hades? Okay, hold on. Let's just do a system survey here. Hades, I'm guessing it's like Moho. Oculus, if I had to guess, it's probably Kerbin Lake. Aries is probably Duna Lake. Uh, what? No, no, okay. The Symmetra, sorry, the Themis, the Themis Artemis system, which is a binary planet, and I'm pretty sure uh, I've seen a picture of this on the Discord, and then there's Ion in, uh, in one of the Lagrange points, it looks like, so we have no shortage of places. We may not have the fuel to fly by all of them. I mean, of course, we have the fuel to fly by all of them, but do I have the fuel and patience to fly by around them with the current amount of fuel I have is the question. Because, yeah, we got 30... It only took about 3 kilometers per second to get here. Uh, and, all right, let's uh, enter orbit, and then I will correct my inclination at the apoapsis. Because really what I tend to do here uh, is I tend to place... Um, I don't care how bad it makes my inclination, as long as one of the ascending nodes or descending nodes is near the periapsis, because then I can correct it at apoapsis for pretty low cost. Obviously, there are, like, there are exceptions. Uh, I forgot to... Right, right we, we uh, still need to be gathering science. I completely forgot about that, so I think that's action group one. And I don't think we have science definitions for this one. Uh, uh, hmm, hold on. I don't think I added the Gravioli scanner to... Uh, Actually, I had uh, I delete that it was also on there. Weird. Uh, collect all. Let's go. Uh huh. I grabbed Valentina. Can Valentina restore? No. <laughs> okay, alright. So, we're not going to get the goo, but the gravioli makes up for it, I hope. Okay, alright. See you when I'm in orbit. And probably I'll see you when I have rendezvous with Oculus. Because there's probably not going to be much to talk about. Okay, so we're pretty much there. Uh, while I'm time warping, let's read the uh, description for Cronus. 
Cronus is a K-type main sequence star, also known as an orange dwarf. It is smaller and cooler than Kerbal, making... What, what? Kerbal? What's Kerbal? <laughs> I've never been there. Making it of particular interest in the search for extraterrestrial life. Cronus has a longer lifespan and emits less ultraviolet radiation, which increases the likelihood of habitable planets in this star system. Okay. And Oculus, since it's blue, and since it kind of looks like it has an ocean on the map, and because it, you know, it's in, like, the typical Earth-like orbit... And since the one outside of it is basically named Mars, I'm guessing that if there is a habitable planet in the system, it's probably this one. I did zoom in lo s close enough to see that this thing has a moon. Uh, and I think this is also one of the home switch options. I'm not entirely sure. So it's probably vaguely Kerbin Lake. But we'll have to uh, check that out there. Also, given how much Delta V it took me to do this, because like interstellar Delta V is, is a lot, I could have done that more efficiently. What I'm guessing is I'm going to... Ooh, that is very uh, Kerbin Lake indeed. Uh... When I have 10 kilometers per second left, that's going to be my go-home number. Now, granted, I can increase that if I've used the lander by then, because the lander has a lot of fuel on it. Hmm. Gravity scan. Consistent gravitational field. Eyeball from space from far away. Totally locked. Um, hmm. Instrument read zero. Okay. Collect all. Let's uh, do an EV airport. From high orbit, I observe the stark contrast between Oculus's day hemisphere, beige and protection. Okay, this is actually a spoiler. I'm, I haven't even seen Oculus yet. So I'm going to uh, get closer before I say anything. And I think I do sp see the moon from this distance, unless that's another planet in the background. Um, I should probably start burning retrograde here. Uh, if I want to have any chance of getting into the orbit of this thing. Because I do only have 30 30 minutes is probably forever, though. Oh, I, I think I have my reactor on that entire time. Uh, what's my reactor lifetime looking like? <laughs> my reactor lifetime... Okay, I still have, like, four years, and I still have over four years, so it's it's probably fine. All right. Let's see. Can we enter orbit? Yeah, we'll easily be able to enter orbit. So let's look at it. Now, that is a nice-looking planet, if I do say so myself. Although I'll have to see the day side up close to see any more about it. I can't see anything on the night side yet, because apparently the, the difference between the night and the day uh, is a bit. Uh, uh, let me let me. See. Oops, I just clicked out of the game. Um, let's see. 0.85 g. How tall is the atmosphere? 65. So I'm not in danger of hitting it. And we should enter orbit any second now, unless I completely misjudge this. I think I completely misjudged this. We're actually getting pretty close. Okay, so we're going to get in orbit past the periapsis, but we are going to get to orbit. And there's Oculus in all of its glory. Those are some cool clouds. Uh, that is a desert and a half facing the sunward side or the Cronusward side. Interesting. It looks like it has a habitable ridge around the edge, but the front and the back are both going to be basically uninhabitable. Interesting. I forgot to get low science, so I'll get that later. Um... But, wow. Uh, I think I'm going to try and target the moon. Tot. Uh, we are roughly at the descending node, so I'll just correct it now. So, interesting. That reminds me of a story I was going to write a while back, uh, but never ended up writing. Uh, where, uh... Okay, I'll know that's still high. Oops. Uh, basically, it was going to be a planet that was in the process of becoming tidally locked. It wasn't quite tidally locked yet. But it would take um, one, like, it would take a thousand years to rotate, basically. So society would have to keep keep moving to the habitable ring. Like, this, the, the habitable ring would keep shifting. And there'd be people, and, and the story would focus on this one guy who was going to be paid. Like, he, he took high-risk work to try and recover artifacts that were recently sunset. Uh, and eventually, the story would, like, progress to... Uh, an important cultural site that was almost about to be sun risen, but technology had advanced to the point where they could just barely hope to make it there alive, um, like hiking into the pre-sunrise lands, something like that. I'm not entirely sure what I was going to call it, but it, it was a cool world building concept. Like the thing is, I, I have so many cool world building ideas, I just can't really bring myself to actually write the stories uh, that would take place in those built worlds. That's an off-kilter encounter, but we have Delta V to burn, so we can take it. Ascending node anti-normal. Hmm. So I'm, I'm expecting this to be a really tiny moon. 
seeing as our closest approach is like 20 kilometers and we still don't have an encounter. Uh, so this is probably going to be absurdly tiny. That's the wrong way. Uh, I'm probably going to shoot that. Like, it's probably going to be smaller than Gilly. That's probably close enough. Now let's get another look at Cronus as we fly past. I don't think we'll be in space low around Cronus. Sorry, not Cronus, Oculus. There's so many new places. That'd be cool. This probably is oxygen too. Okay, we did not go to space low. And I still was not able to see the night side. But it is nice to know that there is a habitable planet here if we need it. Or in theory, habitable. I think I saw green. Yeah, there's, there's definitely green there. So there's life. Now can we see Tot from this angle? I can see Tot from this angle. Uh, let's go target retrograde. And kill off uh, some amount of velocity before we enter the sphere of influence. Oh, it would probably help if we turn the reactor on. Uh, let's do that. There we are. I think we're gonna make it. Ooh, that looks cool. Okay, taut. Orbit retrograde, we can do some science here. Gravity sensor seems much more interested in Oculus than this tiny thing. Trying to get to focus on taut would be an exercise in futility. It is very tiny. Uh, come on, we can easily build spaceships larger than this rock. I wonder how big it is. Measuring the temperature of space is impossible, and the instrument reads zero as if it were in a vacuum. Okay, collect all. Uh, let's EVA report. Uh, do you really need to land this tiny rock? You could just easily send someone down using the EVA jetpack. Good point. Uh, I may have overshot again. I may not enter orbit uh, in this sphere of influence. Actually, no, I think I still will. In fact, I might even have the thrust to weight ratio to land with this thing. I won't even have to use the lander. Whoa, that is quite the impact crater there. 40, 30, 20 meters per second. Uh, and then that's an orbit. And since we're at four kilometers, we'll be safe at four kilometers. So, wow. Okay, that is a stable orbit. Man. That is a tiny, a tiny moon. Okay, so if that's a four... Hold on. What's my semi-major axis right now? So in orbit, and I can just look it up, but I kind of want to prove myself that I still remember how to do the math. Like, right, I can know, right, it's fine. So, hmm. Semi-major axis. Uh, eight kilometers. And if our, our 7.5, and we're at around 4.5 up. So this thing's, this thing's radius is three kilometers. It's a six kilometer wide rock. <laughs> that might be smaller than my hometown. Uh, just double checking my uh, my work. This thing, an asteroid moon around orbiting around Oculus. That's okay. Equatorial is three kilometers, so I was correct there. Three kilometers uh, is going to be. If we look at where I go to school, uh, we are going to take the measure distance feature and click. Okay, so that's one kilometer. Uh, okay, so hmm. okay, the width of the university. Uh, Okay, if we take its maximum extent, basically, the maximum possible size you could call the university proper, uh, that's about half. No, that's, that's about half of the radius. Okay, so yeah, it's not as small as I thought it was. And even if you go to the edge of the uh, uh, the football stadiums, like this is like the maximum possible. Maybe, maybe you even include um, the very edge of like the, the the warehouses up there. But no, that's still only about half of drug deal. Thank you. My sibling has delivered me a Reese's peanut butter cup. Um, uh, okay, so this is definitely bigger than anything I have easily re easy reference for, but still six kilometers. That's a tiny moon. Um, so where is a good landing site? I mean, I don't know about you, but I want to land that crater. So let's let's go down to the surface of Tot. And you know, I I, I want to reiterate just how great it is not having to deal with like 
the solar panel pointing during these tiny moon landings. Like, I, I think, um, I forget which mod pack it was. It might have been Planet Jam. Uh, but it is so great with the nuclear reactors not having to worry about which orientation I'm facing. It's so great. It's so amazing. Let's get some science. Uh, oops, that's the... Okay, do we have enough time to slow down? We may not. Uh, gravity sensor still uh, points towards Oculus. <laughs> Collected... Okay, let's, that's flat enough. Let's get an EVA report while we're here. Do we really need to land on this tiny rock? We went interstellar and we're only getting 36 science from this. <laughs> this thing actually is kind of sporty TWR for an ion ship. Like I can easily, like what is my acceleration right now? Uh, gravity is 0.9, uh, acceleration. 0.6. Okay, never mind. It's not actually that sporty, but it's it's kind of sporty. It's like, like maybe like a, a bit more than a twentieth of a g. Okay. Uh, that is us landed on the surface of Tot. Uh, finally, the gravity sensor focused on Tot now that it is now literally right next to the rock. <laughs> uh, it almost feels like we could disorbit deorbit this thing by pushing it hard enough with a jetpack. That's funny. Uh, collect. Uh, oh, wrong one. Uh, uh, collect all. And let's go plant a flag. Because we can do that, finally. We're finally at a... This is going to be our first flag planted this entire playthrough. Because we haven't... We landed on blue very, very briefly. But this is going to be our first actual flag. <laughs> uh, okay, so the interstellar uh, quest. Which is definitely not named after Scott Manley's series. Totally, 100% not. Uh... A stolen name, but the quest interstellar spaceship has landed on Tot. And there's a very inspired. Uh, okay, I may have ex I'm press cancel, but okay. Uh, whatever. Uh, let's leave it there. Uh, don't jump. You might actually escape the rock's gravity by jumping off of it. I highly doubt that. Uh, analysis of Tot's surface suggests that it just captured asteroid. Like, there's no way that this is going to send us to escape. Like, it's only three meters per second. We got like to 14 coming down here, so no way. No way we're going to escape. One thing I want to see is something in a plant pack is something that's actually small enough to jump off of. Because I don't think I've ever actually seen that. Granted, some of the highest mountains of this might get close, because we did land on a fairly low 